97. Alworth, the inheritor. Alworth is one of the 99 names of Allah, God, mentioned in Islamic tradition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Alworth in Arabic, Alwarithu, the one who remains after all has passed, he is everlasting, and to whom all possessions will be returned. The name Alworth is not explicitly mentioned as one of the names of Allah in the Quran. It is derived from the Arabic word worth which means the inheritor or the heir in English. This attribute is mentioned in the Quran in various verses, including, Allah is the inheritor of everything in the heavens and earth, Quran 39:57. Allah inherits from me and from the descendants of Yaqub, Jacob, Quran 12:64. These verses indicate that Allah inherits everything, and is the ultimate inheritor of all things. While the specific name Alworth may not be mentioned, these verses highlight this characteristic of Allah as the ultimate inheritor, Allah is al baqi the everlasting, and Allah Kir, the last. He is the one who will exist after all possessors disappear, he is also the originator, al Badi, and the creator, al Khaliq. so naturally, all things belong to him. So when all is said and done, when creation vanishes, all things will return to their rightful owner, and indeed, it is we who give life and cause death, and we are the inheritor, Quran 15:23. And, mention, Zechariah, when he called to his Lord, My Lord, do not leave me alone, with no heir, while you are the best of inheritors, Quran 21:89. Understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-worth is also a testament to the person's belief in Tawheed, oneness. We recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works alone, and so the claim to everything is for him solely, he has no partners which whom the inheritance must be shared with. The day they come forth nothing concerning them will be concealed from Allah, to whom belongs, all, sovereignty this day? To Allah, the One, the Prevailing, Quran 40:16, the believer benefits from knowing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Al Worth in many ways. There is a story of a very wealthy man who died. At his funeral, a colleague asked, "I wonder how much he left." To which someone replied, "I believe he left it all. The lesson is that we need to be wiser in our pursuits and how we spend our time." One of the foundational teachings of Islam is that all things return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing was ever ours to begin with. Imagine speaking with your 80-year-old self, what would the older you say to the you of today? Do you think he or she would be happy with how you're spending time? Perhaps you're too hard on yourself or sacrifice too much in the name of worldly pursuits. It's a useful way to think about decision making. What would your 80 year old self think about the thing that's troubling the you of today? As we mentioned previously, wanting financial security for your family's well being is an honorable mission. When the only pursuit is money, that's a problem. Seeking enjoyment is fine. Allah does not say we are forbidden from seeking pleasure from things which he's allowed the problems arise when you only live for pleasure and forget your duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many a city have we destroyed that was insolent in its way of living and those are their dwellings which have not been inhabited after them except briefly. And it is we who were the inheritors, Quran 28:58. This ayah reminds us that all things will inevitably perish and the cities will be destroyed. It's not hard to imagine the ambition that drove the people who lived in the city while it was thriving. They played the game to hoard, not realizing, in the end, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala colon Islam encourages us not to focus on the material we leave behind but on the impact of our legacy. What good will your soul reap even long after you're gone?
This is the concept behind Sadakajarya, the continuing slash perpetual charity. In this way, we can be the inheritors of whatever slash whoever our unique touch reaches. Saul bin Wad bin Anas narrated From his father that, the Prophet said, Whoever teaches some knowledge will have the reward of the one who acts upon it, without that detracting from his reward in the slightest. Being a teacher or educator allows us to reap the same reward as the person who learns from it, who can be a teacher. Just about everybody, this does not mean teaching is a profession, you can share your experience and invite others in to learn from your wisdom or mistakes. Sometimes we try to conceal our past from kids to protect them, not realizing we're just protecting the image of ourselves they can benefit from the knowledge of the good and the bad we've realized. It's an opportunity for redemption as we also receive the reward if it helps them do good and avoid evil. Other examples of Sad Akacharya, narrated Sid Ibn Yubada, Sid asked, Messenger of Allah, Um Sid has died, what form of Sad Aka is best? He replied, water, is best. He dug a well and said, it is for Umsid, it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the messenger of Allah said. When a man dies all his good deeds come to an end except three, ongoing charity, sadakajariya, beneficial knowledge and a righteous son who prays for him. Seek ways in which your good deeds will multiply without your involvement. Having kids and raising them to be righteous will be one of the greatest future rewards to benefit you. All the love and energy you spend as a parent is stored inside your child that kind of effort is not wasted, like a bank, it's stored and will be inherited by the next generation and then the next. Your soul continues to live through them, and your account will reap whatever good they sow. Consider writing down your own principles on what it means to live a good life and pass it down. You don't need to be a best-selling author to get permission to say a few words on a page. If we reframe our actions by thinking of the future impact we can create, it can inspire us to do great things, it doesn't have to be grandiose, it can be as simple as planting a tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and loves to multiply the rewards of the doers of good in his cause. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed, of grain, which grows seven spikes, in each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies, his reward, for whom he wills, and Allah is all-encompassing and knowing, Quran 2-261. Al-worth is understood to mean that Allah is the ultimate inheritor of all things, both in this world and the hereafter. This title signifies Allah's ownership and control over all creation, indicating that everything ultimately belongs to Him and will return to Him. It serves to emphasize Allah's sovereignty and the understanding that He is the ultimate inheritor of all things.